Track 5, Intelligence and Brain Size In this segment, I will describe racial differences in intelligence test scores and brain size. Having a high IQ is a good predictor of success, not just in education, jobs and training, but also in stable marriage and family structure. Low IQ, on the other hand, predicts many negative life outcomes, including child abuse, crime and delinquency, poor health, accident proneness, having a child out of wedlock, getting a divorce before five years of marriage, and even smoking during pregnancy. IQ tests have an average of 100. The normal range extends from dull, IQ of around 85, to bright, IQ of around 115. IQs of 70 suggest handicap, while IQs of 130 signal giftedness. IQ differences between people, including average race differences, show up before age 5, and they last for a lifetime. Around the world, Orientals have an average IQ of about 106, whites about 100, and blacks about 85. The lowest average IQ scores of all are reported in sub-Saharan Africa, about 70. This very low IQ score for Africans has been found in every part of the African subcontinent and on many different tests, including culture fear tests. Intelligence is related to brain size. This has been documented in about two dozen studies using the state-of-the-art technique known as MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, to measure the volume of the human brain. The overall correlation between IQ and brain size measured by MRI is 0.44. This is much higher than the 0.20 correlation found in earlier research using simple head size measures, although even simple head size measures also show the relationship. The races differ in average brain size, and this shows up at birth. One study of mine, published in 1997, was carried out at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. In it, I analyzed an enormous data set known as the Collaborative Perinatal Project. It recorded head circumference measures and IQ scores from over 50,000 children followed from birth to age 7. The results showed that at birth, 4 months, 1 year and 7 years, the Oriental children averaged larger head circumferences than did the white children, who averaged larger head circumferences than did the black children. When I looked within each of the three races, I found the children with the larger head circumferences had the higher IQ scores. We know these race differences in brain size were not due to body size because, by age 7, the black children were the tallest and the heaviest of the three races. Many people are surprised to hear that the races differ in brain size, and they wonder how reliable the evidence is. In fact, dozens of studies using different methods on different samples measured from the 1840s to the 1990s reveal the same strong pattern. Four different methods have been used to measure brain size. MRI, brain weight at autopsy, endocranial volume measured from empty skulls, and external head measures. And they all produce the same results. For example, one MRI study published in the 1994 issue of the British journal Psychological Medicine examined over 100 people in the United Kingdom and found that Africans and West Indians averaged a smaller brain size than did whites. In the 1840s, the famous neurologist Paul Broca studied brain weight at autopsy. He found that Orientals averaged heavier brains than did whites, while whites averaged heavier brains than did blacks. 
Broca also reported that whites averaged more complex convolutions and larger frontal lobes than did blacks. Many other studies followed. For example, in 1980, a team led by Kenneth Ho confirmed the black-white differences. Their autopsy study was published in the Archives of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine. Original brain weights for 1,261 American adults showed that whites averaged 100 grams more brain weight than blacks. Because the blacks and whites in the study were similar in body size, differences in body size cannot explain away the differences in brain size. Another way to measure brain size is by filling skulls with packing material. In the middle of the 19th century, over 1,000 skulls were studied by the American anthropologist Samuel George Morton. He found that blacks averaged about 5 cubic inches less cranial capacity than whites. These results, too, have stood the test of time. For example, in 1984, Kenneth Beals and his team carried out the largest study of race differences in endocranial volume to date, with measurements of up to 20,000 skulls from around the world. Their results, published in Current Anthropology, showed skulls from East Asia were three cubic inches larger than those from Europe, and European skulls, in turn, were five cubic inches larger than those from Africa. A final way of estimating brain size is from the length, width, height, and circumference of the outside of the head. Again, the results confirm the racial differences. I carried out a series of studies estimating brain size this way and published them throughout the 1990s in psychology journals such as Intelligence. In the most comprehensive of these studies, I calculated average cranial capacities for Asians, whites, and blacks from a stratified random sample of over 6,000 U.S. Army personnel. The Asians averaged 36 cubic centimeters more capacity than did the whites, and the whites averaged 21 cubic centimeters more capacity than did the blacks. This study allowed precise adjustments for all kinds of body size measures. Yet, adjusting for these or other variables did not erase the average racial differences in cranial capacity. To sum up this segment, Orientals average one cubic inch more brain matter than whites, and whites average five cubic inches more than blacks. Since one cubic inch of brain matter contains millions of brain cells and hundreds of millions of synapses or neural connections, brain size differences help to explain why the races differ in average IQ.